What is up my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Credit Lake and today we're going to be starting Broken Wings by Grateful Raven Feathers on fanfiction.net. Summary. Virgil is taken by deceit and Thomas, Pat, and Roman and Logan have to rescue him. Virgil is conflicted. He wants to escape but he, but what will the others say about the wings he has to keep hidden from them for so long? And any of the trigger warnings will be in the description below. We'll be starting with Chapter 1, Virgil's Point of View. Where am I? Virgil called out, hating how small and weak his voice sounded as he echoed through the dark room. He didn't really remember how we got whatever you was tied to a chair in a pitch black. And his hoodie was gone. Where was it? He panicked and looked behind him at a large black and purple wings. His jacket was the only thing that his that hid them from the other sides, and now it was gone. And on top of that, something warm and wet and slowly dripping down his temple, Virgil had the sickening suspicion that it was blood. P Patton? Logan? Roman. Virgil tried again, but all he heard in response was his echo. His wings rustled nervously, and he could feel himself beginning to panic, breaths coming out in frantic bursts and his chest constricting and his head pounding. Come on, Virgil, he muttered to himself. Just calm down. Breathe in for four, hold for seven, out for eight. But the anxiety he typically represented kept building within him. Where was he? Where was his hoodie? Where were the other sides? Why was he bleeding and tied to a chair? Now Virgil was hyperventilating, unable to cope with the constant swirl of questions inside his head. A hauntingly familiar voice whispered in Virgil's mind as he began to fade out of consciousness. It's all right, little one. A half-snake face shimmered into view in front of Virgil. Everything is fine. Chapter 2, Thomas's Point of View Thomas was not having a good day. He had a terrible nightmare that night before. But as soon as he woke up, in a cold sweat, he couldn't remember any of it. Just an unsettling fear in the pit of his stomach. He got up and showered, but even that didn't calm him down. Even that didn't calm him down. Neither did his shaky attempt at breakfast. Finally, Thomas decided to summon his sides to see if they knew why he was so on edge. Roman was the first to arrive. In his pajamas, no less. What the heck, dude? He asked. It's like 6.30 in the morning. You never get up this early. He tightened the strap around his bathrobe grumpily. Um, what's up, kiddo? Pennon asked cheerfully, though a little more subdued than normal. He was in his ki kitten onesie. And he, like Roman, didn't seem too keen to be up this early. Though he tried not to show it. Then Logan appeared in his unicorn onesie, facial expressionless, as he closed his book. Yes, Thomas? For what do you require our assistance? Thomas was about to answer, but suddenly doubled over in pain. His head throbbed horribly, and he could barely hear the sides. Worried explanations over the ringing in his ears. When he could finally see straight, he looked back up at the facets of his personality. Penna was on the verge of tears, a worried look m marrying his usual foul features. Roman looked horrified and had his sword drawn, as he thought it would, would help fight whatever was calling Thomas to suffer. Even Logan looked concerned, his book lying at his feet completely abandoned. Thomas? Penna whispered. What happened? I'm not sure. I've been super on edge ever since I woke up. 
from this awful nightmare and I was hoping you guys could help me figure it out. Then this awful migraine kicked in. You had a nightmare too? Pennon asked quietly. Well, yeah, Thomas said. Wait, do you guys sleep? Yes, Thomas, Logan interjected. We are very similar to humans, and we mirror your personal sleeping and eating habits, though we technically don't need them to survive. Yes, and while our dreams may differ from yours, Roman continued, it appears we all had a rough night. The weird part is that I don't remember what the dream was. Thomas didn't miss the meaningful glance between the sides. You guys remember, don't you? They all shook their heads, silence and thought. Then Roman spoke up. Well, if you're so anxious and on edge, why don't we speak to Mr. Happy Little Rainbows of Darkness himself? He turned to address anxiety, but for the first time realized he wasn't there. He paled. Um, where's Virgil? Thomas and the other sides immediately gasped as they realized the youngest side wasn't present. Well, this is a catastrophe, Pettin nearly shrieked, but how did Virgil forget? It does seem quite odd that Virgil hasn't appeared, despite Thomas's anxiety being so currently heightened. Logan stated, shooting a side glance at Patton for the pun. Well, where could he be? Thomas asked quietly, and Logan looked down, for once unsure. Roman cleared his throat. Mm, he might have just slept in, the prince suggested half-heartedly. It won't hurt to check the old Charlie Frown's room. The thing is, kiddo, Patton interceded, it actually would. Remember last time? We could permanently damage Thomas's fatigue if we all remain in Virgil's corner of the Mind Palace for too long, especially Virgil's corner. That's why our trace went into hyperdrive. Well, maybe just one of you guys could come with me to look for him, Thomas suggested. Actually, Logan stated, straining his glasses, that is an adequate idea. Because I am intellectual trait, unused to strong emotions, it would be more affected by Virgil's aura, because Roman and Virgil are so opposite, Roman probably shouldn't go either. Patton, on the other hand, is an emotional trait, like Virgil. He'll be able to come out mostly unscathed from a brief encounter of Virgil's room. And so, plant formed, Morality and Thomas appeared to look for anxiety. Chapter 3, Virgil's Point of View When Virgil woke up, he really wished he hadn't. The side ha he had once trusted as his closest ally stood directly in front of him, smirking as he took off his bright yellow gloves. Ah, sleeping beauty has awoken, Deceit sneered. How was your little panic attack? Why am I here, Snake? What do you want? Virgil asked through clenched teeth. Head still reeling from blood loss, his wings felt heavy, drooping to the ground. Oh, Virgil, Deceit tisked in mock sympathy. We discussed this earlier. Then again, head injuries do strange things to people. Virgil struggled against the bonds as the snake drew closer, but in vain. Suddenly, Dissy grabbed Virgil's face with his bare hands. A fiery white hot pain streaked through Virgil's body as he spasmed, unable to control himself, as his back arched and his wings flapped frantically. Virgil's pain was mirrored in Dissy's human eye, though it didn't seem to affect the liar in quite the same way. The hold seemed to stretch into eternity for Virgil, though it had only had been a minute or so. He could hear this awful, drawn-out scream echoing through the room. 
He didn't realize it was his own voice until his throat began to throb painfully from the strain. His wings, weak as they had come, started to lift him off the ground. Virgil could only imagine what this was doing to Thomas, and it was making him guilty. Finally, the sea let go and took a few shaky steps back, both sides breathing hard. Virgil's body spasmed as the chair regained contact with the floor, trying to get the pain out of his system. Why, why are... Virgil managed to gasp out. Why you doing th this to me? Because you abandoned me and the rest of the Dark Side brothers. You turned your back on your true nature. Started to help Thomas. All I ever wanted was for Thomas to be safe, Virgil shouted. Y you and I used to lie to him about himself, so he, 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 he wouldn't make a fool out of himself. <gasps> but it wasn't making, making him happy. <laughs> and now you think he and his major sides have what? accepted you they know that without you our host can't function so they tolerate you pretend to care but deep down v you're a dark side you can't change it and you can't deny it they virgil's heart and head pounded was it true DC worked through half lies and twisted truths and he couldn't tell which parts were the inevitable lies. He was a dark side, though. He had, hadn't had always been. He'd made many mistakes during the earlier years of his existence, but after he tried to cut himself off from Thomas, the others had accepted him, hadn't they? Or was it a lie, too? Virgil started to tear up, to see he laughed maliciously, as only one thought clouded Virgil's mind and judgment. What if they don't care enough to come for me? Thank you all so much for listening. This is chapter one, two, and three. I'd like to clarify that again because I'm re-recording these because my first take that I uploaded for some reason was white noise. I swear it worked. When I uploaded, I checked the audio. I swear. Ah. <laughs> but that was for some reason white noise once it was uploaded to YouTube after a little bit. So, I'm posting this here. Hopefully this works. I got- I, this is literally the first time I'm using a new microphone for this episode. So, what you're hearing is a brand new microphone. So, it should be good. <laughs> so, thank you all for, so much for listening. My social media is in the description below, along with my Etsy shop, where I have a lot of beaded things, including brand new LGBTQ plus flag pins and magnets. There's the channel Discord where you can talk to other Jacks and Drakes, and the TikTok where I do Sander Sides cosplays. Thank you so much for listening, and much like Virgil struggling to leave his chair, do your best.